um, is something that that writers uh, and directors and filmmakers they forget about. Do you have any tips on how to, we can add some really nice subtext to our stories? I do actually. So subtext for me is. Again, I do. I talk about it in the book briefly as well. Is that when we? So I'm going to talk about the breakup scene mm -hmm. um, because I kind of. It's one of these. You know, our lives peppered, and if you look back through our memories, there are these certain blips that happen, and and breakups and deaths and mm -hmm. you know angry moments are, are things that kind of pop up. So so the breakup scene I kind of use as an example. Often when, when someone has to write a breakup scene, so your job as a writer is very often like, okay, this guy has to break up with this girl in order for the plot to move forward, so I've got to write a breakup scene. Mm -hmm. So you're not really, you know, it's not the kind of central reason why you're writing the movie, but for the plot to move forward, you've got to write a breakup scene. So you go, okay, they're in bed, and uh, one of them gets up and says something like, um, you know, I've always loved you, but I think it's time we end it. <laughs> okay, whatever. What? And the other one says, <laughs> right. you know, it's like, it's like uh, okay, well, if you do you really, no, no, please don't leave me or whatever. You know, these, I'm just drawing the first thing that comes to mind. And the dialogue is really on the nose. And it's, and, and it's like, you know, but you're getting the scene written. So you're writing and it's feeling like, okay, cool. I'm writing a breakup scene. And like structurally, you've written a breakup scene, but there's no subtext. It's all on the nose dialogue. It's all exactly what, you know, kind of anyone could could write. But if you take a moment to think about, wait a minute, when did I break up with someone? What did I actually say? Yeah. What words were used? Yeah. I'm going back to my own breakups in my head. <laughs> As you're saying this, I'm like, we, were, we didn't actually say what we meant. We said other things. Totally. You would never, you know, you don't want to hurt the person's feeling. You, you don't want to say like, so you, you get up and you say like, <laughs> I don't even know what you say. I'm trying to No, no, it's just like it's well. it's not <laughs> you, it's me. It's you know, but like, you mm -hmm. know, but you never like I remember my one of my breakups and I didn't even know it came. And it was like in the in like like yeah. literally an hour prior to the breakup, everything was fine. But underneath all of it, it was her about to break up with me. And she and I it just was brought it broadsided me because I couldn't yeah. read the subtext of her for obviously for months um, yep. <laughs> of, yep. of what she was doing. <laughs> obviously for months, yep. I didn't see what was going on uh, and, she, and her discontent yep. with our relationship at the time. Um, but you're right. It was never on the yep. nose. If you do a breakup, it's no. never on the nose. It's never something that no. I'm breaking up with you because you uh, leave the dishes out all the time. You don't make the bed <laughs> and you're horrible in the sack. Like you never hear yeah. that. <laughs> It's never, not, never. No. But you, but I see it in scripts, first time scripts all the time, in first drafts. You're like, you know, this is just, whoa, what are you doing? And then, you know, you know, where you hear it, and, and often, you know, you, the breakup happens with a look, yeah, or, or like a moment where, or somebody brings you a cup of tea every morning, and one morning, they don't, and it's you look at them, or they bring it, and they just put it down, and you look, and there's that one look, and and you say, love you, and someone says, turns away, and you're like, what the fuck? You know, where's the where's the response? And and so for me, the subtext is and, I, and and this is, again, one of these things I wanted to teach writers. How do I teach subtext? I don't know. But we live it all the time. You know, we constantly decoding the world as human beings. We're looking at each other's faces. We're constantly reading the subtext all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, the guy is serving you your coffee at the Starbucks. You're looking at the subtext. You're realizing this guy's had a shitty day and your mind. You're kind of reading into everything all the time. And that is what writers need to write in their scripts is writing that stuff that we we kind of con and and when you then when you see that on the screen you're like ah oh, she's gonna break up with him you know it already mm -hmm. because it's all in the subtext and i think that's that, that's my main advice is like right from life right from what you've seen in life and then look at your script and go is this realistic to my own life has this you know, and then go to your memory wall and say hmm can i draw from something else from there is there another way of saying this? And I'd say, yeah, that's that's the thing for me with subtext is it's it's obviously not writing on the nose, but it's a lot more about what is unsaid. And, you know, one of the kind of I said, this isn't in the book, but because it's kind of one of the kind of more obvious things is like just if you can show it without saying it, then that's going to be, you know, that's going to be the best that especially with subtext, you know, it's, it's like, 
you know, and and never people never say what they mean. I mean, it's you know, it's like you say, you know, no never. one says I'm I'm breaking up with you because you, you know, you you don't clean the dishes. Yes, yeah. never, never ever happens. No, it does. It's always something else. It's always something else. Yeah. And they always, you're right. And we are constantly decoding human behavior on a daily basis. But for whatever reason, when we write for the first time, you forget that. And you're so on the nose. And it took me a long time to realize what on the nose meant. Yeah. Like yeah, just yeah, like because yeah. I would my first scripts were like I got notes back or I got coverage on it. And they're like, yeah, your dialogue's on the nose. And I'm like, yep. I get I understand the concept. But I'm like, what do you mean? I'm, I'm yeah. He's going from point A to point B. He's talking about point A to point B. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, that, that's just the way the story's moving forward. I don't understand yep. why it's not yep. working. And then all of a sudden yep. something clicks and go. Dude, it's not about A to B. It's about Y to Z. And if you got to write <laughs> about Y to Z while you're doing A yeah. to B. There you got it's, something. Oh, yep. And I probably, have confused, and I probably have confused more people listening now than before. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a really confusing thing. And actually, as writers, we are facing this dilemma because we're not just writing dialogue that happened in life. This is the other thing. We're not, and I talk about it in the book as well. I'm not expecting you to write your breakup scene. That's going to be boring. I'm sorry. It probably is, you know, it's really important to you. But, you know, out of context, if you write a breakup scene um, from life, it's going to be boring. We, we as writers have to also move the plot forward. So we're doing two things. We, we're moving the plot forward with our dialogue. So we're delivering information that has to do with the plot. And then we're also trying to keep it real, like people speak in real life. And that balance, I think that's where people struggle a lot because we do have to move the plot forward. They have to break up by the end of the scene. You have to communicate to the audience. They have broken up. They, someone might have to say, so we're we breaking up. Yeah. Okay. That might have to be in there somewhere. But you don't put that in all the time. So that, that's the balance that we've got to face as writers, keeping it real, keeping the dialogue real, but then moving the plot forward. And very often people just move the plot forward and then they stop keeping it real. And that's the balance. It is difficult. And I think it's one of the most difficult things. I think it's kind of it's a really tricky question about subtext and why you're, you're, you're reverting to things like A to B and Y to Z because it becomes quite abstract in a way. And actually, that's a lot of what writing is. It's really abstract. And screenwriting, even though it's a craft, no doubt, and there are a lot of books out there that tell you about, you know, if you plot from X to Y and A to B and then there's the graphs and diagrams and all these things. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, yeah, okay. But in truth, no one really knows anything and and you've got to just it's a fragile beast we're dealing with here this creativity especially in screenwriting and this is what i think is why my book is slightly different to the other stuff is that it deals with the creative process in the moment when you're creating and so it's it's that kind of um it's that kind of subtle and and often language fails us at this point language fails us and it becomes art again and it's quite exciting in a way, mm -hmm. even though, you know, I'm telling your view, your view is now going, what the hell are these guys talking about? Just tell me how to do it. And I'm saying, it's yes, not, there are ways. It's not that easy. It's not.